Good morning, good morning. We are live on Facebook. I'm running an hour late. There was an important meeting for my daughter this morning that they scheduled at 8.30, so those things happen when we do live. But we're reading in our daily Bible, and we're on March the 26th of 2020, right smack dab in the middle of this thing they're calling, I don't know, coronavirus or something like that. So um, today's reading, once again, is just extremely, extremely um, encouraging to me, and I hope that my words will be encouraging to you. Good morning, Bandy. Good to see you on. Love having you on. Thank you for coming on, even though I come on an hour late. Good morning, Kimberly. Nice to see you too. <clears throat> so we're reading in Deuteronomy chapters five and six today. And once again, you know, we're at that moment in time when they're getting ready to cross over. And uh, Moses knows that he's not going to get to cross over. And so it's in his heart. He's wanting to share things. And God's telling him what to share with the people. And you know, again, I just, I, I just so much see in these readings. I see us today. I, I believe that these readings that we're we're in is telling us things for today to help us get through today. Uh, this coronavirus thing that's happening. You know, on a morning when um, they talked about in the news this morning, just briefly. I didn't look at a lot of it, but I. I just heard that this morning is the highest death rate we've had yet with a coronavirus. And, and I want to continue to emphasize, I never want anybody to misunderstand my heart. My heart is if we lose one, it's too many. And, and see, this book, this, this Bible tells me, and, and then God speaking to me and the intimacy I have with him, I know that one premature death is not my father's heart either. So my heart breaks, and I know that it breaks the heart of my father. And, and even in today's reading, we're gonna see that. I'm gonna point that out in today's reading, that God doesn't want not one of us lost. I don't want not one of us lost. One death is too many. And, and if indeed you happen to be one of those people that has lost a loved one, that knows of somebody that it right now at this very moment is battling this horrible virus that has been spreading across the lands, um, please understand that God understands grief and mourning. And we go through a period of time here on this physical earth. You know, don't forget that when Jesus came up to the tomb, where Lazarus was, and he saw the people there crying and wailing and mourning the death of Lazarus, that the Bible says Jesus wept. So uh, all the time I'm speaking hope and I'm telling you things like the best is yet to come because I believe it, these folks were standing at the Jordan River knowing that on the other side, on the other side was a land flowing with milk and honey. I, I continue to speak that. I'm going to continue to speak that hope. I'm going to continue to get you to focus on the future. But please understand, if you happen to be one of those, that it's okay that we cry. It's okay that we mourn. It's okay, it's okay that we are waiting for words of our loved ones. And, and nothing I'm saying is contrary to that. Nothing that I say is contrary to that. But I, again, we're reading in our daily Bible in a period of time that's unprecedented for our lives. Now, there certainly has been plagues in the past in the history of the world that has been far greater than what we've so far experienced with this virus. But in our lives, I haven't experienced anything like this. So I want to find the encouragement that I believe that God is giving us, that it's not a coincidence that in the 80s, there's a group of people that sat down in this one year Bible reading plan and they, they sat down, used their mathematicians and calculations and did all that it took to say, okay, if they'll read this part of the Old Testament today and if they read this part of the New and this Psalms and this Proverbs, 
We'll put this together, and over the course of 365 days, they're going to read from the front of the Bible to the end of the Bible. And then, bam, God's anointing is on that. And here we are, March the 26th of 2020, and we get just exactly what we need today. And I've been doing this for 18 years. What I got today is not what I got 10 years ago. But I didn't need it 10 years ago. I need it today. And not only do I need it, but the people that's hearing my voice needs what's in this Bible today. I'm telling you what, tell people. Take a picture of your Bible, of your one-year Bible, and send it out on social media. Email it out to your friends. Um, tell them to join our YouTube channel. Tell them to join Elizabeth Inman Public Page and get the encouragement from the Word to help them get through this time. But here's the other part of that, guys. We've done it for 18 years, and, and I've publicly done this now I can't remember now at this moment if it's my fourth or fifth year. It doesn't matter. I did, I, 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 I've done it all that time leading up to this time. And, and I'm not going to stop when the news flash says, oh, well, the worst of the coronavirus is over. I'm not going to quit because this is what prepares us for such a time as this. It's part of what prepares us for such a time as this. And, and I'll continue on. For the next time, there's something that I have to be prepared for. And there will always be something. Our, our Bible will tell us that. He warns us. And I believe he's been warning us for this. I, I had two friends that had a situation in a, in a car during uh, the wintertime on some ice that their vehicle spun around, spun around, and they knew. They knew that the good Lord wrapped his arms or his angels wrapped his their arms around his arm blah, blah blah the good lord sent his angels and wrapped their arms around that vehicle and saved them and yesterday i believe the good lord showed me that that was a way of preparing them for what we're going through now it was i mean what greater picture of how our father cares for us than he saved us what from what should have been a catastrophe out on the roads what a great way to show us that if I'll protect you in traffic, I'll protect you through a virus. If, if I've got you through this season, I'll get you through the next season. And that's what we're reading about. That's why we read. I mean, and look at what Moses is doing. They're at the Jordan River and, and they can see it. Moses is allowed to see it. He, God told him to get up on the mount and look out and at least he could gaze upon the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land, even though he wasn't going to be allowed to, to oh, enter in, God bless you, Thank you. Uh, enter in, he could see it. He could gaze on it. And, and, and the words that he spoke are this. <clears throat> the Lord our God, Deuteronomy 5, verse 2, the Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Sinai. He's taken them back to the past. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive today, at the mountain, the Lord spoke to you face to face. See, Moses is taking them through a process of going back and saying, look at what all God's done. So in the past weeks, I've told you all to do a grateful journal. I'm still telling you, do a grateful journal. Keep that grateful journal going. But now add to it. If, if, if you're still struggling, add to it. Write down all of the things that God has done for you. Now, certainly that should be a part of your grateful journal, but if you look at it in a different way, you're doing what Mo Moses is saying to do. At the mountain, the Lord spoke to you face to face from the heart of the fire. I stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord, for you were afraid of the fire and you didn't want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me and I passed his words on to you. And this is what he said. And he reminds them of what he said to them in the past. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from, the words written is from the land of Egypt, but today the words are, I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the last time you got sick. From the last time they said the H1N1 virus was going to get you. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from Ebola. I am the Lord your God that rescued you from the swine flu. I am the, you, you get the message? So then that means that he is saying to us today, I am the Lord your God 
who rescues you from all of the viruses. You must not have any other God. And then he goes through and he reminds them of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and then he goes through and in verse 14 says, All your male and female servants must rest as you do. I mean, how many of y'all know that this, in Oklahoma, it's 21 days. In some other states, they've already made it 30 days of staying at home. Do you think that's not God's way of telling us to rest? Or l l let's not even say it that way. Because it's not God's way that we have this virus. It's God's way that because we're being told to stay at home, that he'll turn it for good and allow us to rest. I am looking forward to the next 20 days because we're one day into ours. I'm looking forward to the rest that I'm going to have. <clears throat> Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt. Remember that this isn't the only plague that's ever hit um, the face of the earth. You and I weren't alive when the Spanish uh, uh, plague hit. Look it up. Look at how many millions of people died Remember that you were once slaves to whatever it is that's been binding you. You were once slaves to the fear that's gripping you right now. <clears throat> but the Lord your God brought you out with his strong hand and powerful arm. There's those of you out there that can also say that, man, I had a near miss out on the highway and God's hand saved me. Man, I... I, I got diagnosed with something and I prayed about it and the next test result came back and it wasn't even there. I mean, God has rescued you from so many things and he's reminding you of that today. And then verse 15, that that is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. Um, we've got to remember the rest. And especially right now, we can't let our bodies grow weary and not be in rest. Verse 22, the Lord spoke the word, these words to all of you assembled there at the foot of the mountain. He spoke with a loud voice, and I'm reminded to tell you once again, he's speaking to you. Right now, today, God is speaking to you, and I'm going to go someplace with that, because yesterday, I want to remind you that the word was, obey me, obey, and I told you, that I knew that if you were listening to our video, that there was something you were supposed to be doing. There was something that God was asking you to do to obey his voice. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. And then verse 23, but when you heard the voice from the heart, while the mountain was blazing with fire, verse 24, then they, uh, they said, look, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness. And we've heard his voice from the heart of the fire. Today, we have seen that God can speak to us humans, and yet we live. God is speaking, folks. I mean, I'm telling you, I will not stop believing. I will not stop believing that if every one of us believers rise up in the authority given to us by Jesus Christ himself, says, he says to us, even God Almighty in Genesis told Adam, take dominion over all things on the earth. And then Jesus said, my authority I have, all the things I have done, even greater things will you do. If, if and when all of us believers rise up and we speak to this coronavirus to be gone, to evaporate and be gone, I believe that we could wake up to headlines that says, we don't know what happened. But as of this morning, not a single case has been reported. We don't know what happened. But as of today, by the dozens, people are leaving the hospitals. I will never stop believing that we can rise up and call this thing to end and it'll end. I'll never stop believing that. Never, never stop believing it. There's, I, I can't read these, this word day after day after day and not believe that that's not the authority that we've been given to do as believers. We've got to rise up and we've got to fight. That's why I keep saying over and over again, fight. Don't, don't, don't cower in your homes in fear. Stay in your homes and fight. Obey. Don't, don't, you know, in today's reading, it'll say, don't test God. Don't test God. Don't test God. That's not what we're doing. We're going to stay at home, but we're not going to be idle. We are warriors. 
called by God to fight the good fight of faith. <clears throat> Whew. And then verse 28, the Lord heard the request you made to him. And he said, I've heard what the people said and they are right. Oh, that they would always have hearts like this, that they might fear me and obey all my commands. If they did, they and their descendants would prosper forever. So once again, he's reminding us what happens when we obey. And then, and then he goes on to say, you must teach them to the people, talking about his commandments. Um, but you stand here with me so I can give you all my commands, all my decrees and regulations. You must teach them to the people so they can obey them in the land that I'm giving them as their possession. See, he gave them the land, and as he gave them the land, he gave them commands that they were to obey. So as we hear, so we don't need a Moses today. We don't need a prophet to stand up and say, well, thus saith the Lord. No, all we need is a still heart and ears, spiritual ears to listen what he is speaking to us. And then the promise comes. Um, chapter 5, verse 13. Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you're about to enter. <laughs> oh, not only are you going to enter, you're going to occupy it. We're right there. We're right there. We're there looking out and knowing the best is yet to come because we're going to be on the other side of this virus thing. Just as they were on the uh, banks of the Jordan River looking over and they could see the promised land with the promise that we'll live long and prosperous lives in that land, in that next. The cool part is, guys, we have him with us right now as we stand on that bank looking over I get to live a long, full, prosperous life right now today as well in my home, not going out unless it's necessary and I can rest. <laughs> I don't have to wait. We talk about what's to come because, because of the hope that's in us, because we know by reading the word that it, for everything glorious we're experiencing today, it's going to be even better tomorrow. That's why I always say the best is yet to come. But just because I say the best is yet to come doesn't mean I don't get to live heaven on earth right now. I mean, I'm living the best life I've ever lived right now, today, March the 26th of 2020. And so can you. Uh, verse uh, Chapter 6, verse 2 says that you will enjoy a long life. And the verse five says, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And then verse 10, another reminder, the Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors. <laughs> it is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig, and you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. Those scriptures right there were the conf confirmation for Tom and I to buy the home, this wonderful, beautiful sanctuary that we live in today. Those scriptures right there three years ago confirmed that, yes, this was the home God was giving us to live in. We were to buy this home. And then here we are today. It's a promise. It's a promise for us <laughs> oh, that our homes will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. See, that'll keep me from going out and buying out all the toilet paper. That Those words right there keeps me from going out and hoarding all of the uh, Lysol spray or buying up all the hamburger they have or anything else. <laughs> you must not worship any of the gods of the neighbors. I go out and I hoard up that toilet paper and I'm worshiping the god of toilet paper. Woe be unto me. God's my source. He takes care of the sparrows right in the middle of this virus. How much more will he take care of us? Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight so all will go well with you. And that leads me to what I want to tell you is your next step. I've been telling you to take, uh, first of all, always telling you to pray, to listen, and to read. And then adversity comes. And I tell you to do a grateful journal, to ward off the bad thoughts. And then I'll tell you to 
Write down all of the things that God's already brought you through to remind you of the goodness of God, to remind you that he has a future and a hope for you. And then I tell you to listen and obey. He's speaking to you. And, and so this is what I want to tell you. You continue to struggle. And even if you don't continue to struggle, who is it you can help? Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. Who can you pick up the phone and call and just say, how are you? You know, I have one great aunt left that is my Grandma Letha's sister. And, I, and I'd like to tell you guys that I serve her and I'm there and I bring her cookies and flowers on a regular basis. I don't. I don't, guys. I'm just real with you. I should. Shame on me that I don't. But you know what I did do yesterday on my first day of being homebound? I picked up the phone and I told my Aunt Ruth that I love her. I told her that I was thinking of her. She's got a cold. I told her not to let her thoughts go there, that this cold will pass. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. Who can you serve right there from your home? Who can you serve? What can you do? Stop making it all about you. Stop making it about your fear. There, God will guide you. He'll show you. See, I don't think that thought came from me. I think that thought came from my father. Why do I think that? Because the Bible tells me that all good and perfect things come from him. Was it a good thought for me to pick up the phone and call my Aunt Ruth? You better believe it was. Her response was priceless. See, I'm, I'm in my carnal flesh. I'm not capable of those good things. But when I still myself and I listen, I can hear my father say, pick up the phone and call Aunt Ruth. Hmm. Yeah. Don't tell me that you don't know what to do. If you tell me that you don't know what to do, then you're not listening to your father. Who can you serve? And then I'm going to tell you again, and I'm going to shout it from the mountaintops. Now is the time to give. If you're fearful for your job, you need to be sowing seeds that'll be harvested later. The woman who had two single pennies came to the temple and gave it all all everything she had was two pennies and she came to the temple and in the presence of the lord jesus she put it into the offering plate now is the time to give who can you sow into what can you sow into what ministry would benefit from i don't know if it's a dollar i don't know if it's five dollars I don't know if it's a thousand dollars you're supposed to be giving, but I can tell you this. I know that I know that my father in heaven during this time is telling you to give, to give. It may be your favorite suit in the closet that he's telling you to give to somebody. You may not be able to take it to him today, but you can settle it into your heart today that I'm going to give that crock pot to that lady that loves to cook for people. I'm going to give. I'm going to sow into that ministry. I know he's speaking to Tom and I, to Tom and I. And the cool part is, is that we're together in that. He doesn't separate us in that. He brings us together in that. We're looking for a number right now today. We're, 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 we're hearing, and, and, and when Tom and I do this, I listen and I say, Father, what is the number we're to give? Tom says, what is the number we're to give? And then we come together and we say, what's your number? And it's the same number. Mm. Give. Serve somebody. Help somebody. Pick up the phone and talk to somebody that needs to hear your voice. Check on that, that widow or that widower. Reach out to them. Serve. And then give. Give. If you'll follow that formula, the devils will have to flee from you a thousand at a time, as it says in the Bible. They'll come at you one way and they'll flee from you a thousand ways. That'll happen if you follow that. Pray, listen, read, write your grateful journal, list all the things that God's brought you through, and then find somebody to serve, and then give, give. You can't get out amongst the people. What ministry is getting out amongst the people and serving meals and serving 
and giving clothes and food and shelter. If you don't have a place to give, Elizabeth Inman Ministries, P.O. Box 1149, Sky Took, Oklahoma, 74070. And you're not giving because I got to have money. You're giving because God tells you to give. And I'm telling you, if you don't have a place to give, Elizabeth Inman Ministries, P.O. Box 1149, Sky Took, Oklahoma. It's all God's. It's all God's. This home, this sanctuary is not mine. Even though my name's on the deed, it's not mine. This is God's home. This is God's house. This is his sanctuary, and he's made it our sanctuary. That's the way it works. That's why we read. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Luke chapter 7, I mentioned that I'd talk about this. Um, what I talked about if you've lost somebody. It may be to the virus. It may be a car wreck. It may be another disease. It may be at the end of their life, and I'm telling you that it's okay that we go through a grief and a mourning, because listen to this story in Luke chapter 7. If you didn't read it, I'll read it for you, because I want you to hear these words. Soon after, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. Do I think it's a coincidence that this is the message we're reading today on March the 26th, 2020? I know it's not a coincidence. <clears throat> the young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. And verse 13, I want you to hear this today. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. So I tell you to get up on the rooftops and shout it out that God is still God. He didn't change because of a virus. I tell you to get up on the rooftops and shout the best is yet to come. I, get, I tell you that I have no fear and I'm not going to fear this virus. And I tell you that we've got to have hope and we've got to move forward and don't hold your head down and don't and don't and don't and do and do and do. But at the same time, I know my father's heart to to, to those that have lost, to those that are suffering. And this is what I say to you today. When the Lord sees you, his heart overflows with compassion. And when I hear, my heart overflows with compassion. It's real. Hmm. A mighty prophet has risen among us, verse 16, and God has visited his people today. Today, God has visited his people. At that very, very time, at that very time, at this very time, verse 21, Jesus cured many people of their diseases, illnesses, and evil spirits, and he restored sight to many who were blind. On this day, Jesus said, all these things I've done, how much more will you do? Because in my place, the comforter comes. The power of the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. And all the things I've done, even greater things will you do. Pray. Pray. The other day, whether it was yesterday or the day before, the Roman officer came to Jesus and said, My slave back home is ill. Will you say the word and he'll be healed? And Jesus said, Your faith has made it so. And, they, and when he went home, at that time that, that Jesus spoke the words, the slave was healed. We can speak the words sitting right here in our, in our homes, right here, homebound, because the laws of the land says don't get out, and we can heal the sick. We rise up and we speak to that virus, be gone, dissipate right now in the name of Jesus. Those that are affected, be healed. Rise up from your hospital beds today. Rise up from your sick bed in the home today. Be healed, just as this, this says. At this very time, Jesus cured many people of their diseases, illnesses, and evil spirits, and he restored sight to many who were blind. We have a role to play not because we have to do something to please God, but because he loves us and he empowers us and he infuses us with his faith, the faith he gave us to go forth and to do what is right. 
what the Bible said, do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. So all will be well with you. Hmm. Thank you, Lord, for guidance on this day. Thank you, Father, that I know what my path is today. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the knowing that I know that I know the best is yet to come. Thank you, Father, that you overflow with compassion. On this day, the day that I woke and heard that the death toll in the United States is the worst it's been in, in, in this virus, I thank you, Father, that your heart overflows with compassion and that that gives me comfort to know that when my heart overflows with compassion, that that's not seen as a lack of faith. That is seen as you are in this world, so is he. What a time for us believers. I'm telling you, now is the time for the harvest. Share the videos, get them out there. Start your own video. I, I don't care, it's not about me, but it is about getting this out there. There's a world that's hurting that needs this. We ought to have a million, a two million, three million viewers on these videos every day, and it won't happen if you don't share it. It won't happen if you don't sow the seed into this ministry. If this is touching you in any way, you ought to be given. You ought to be given. I don't need your money. <laughs> I have the source of the heavens of earth. Heavens over earth was open to me when I accepted and I stepped into what he's prepared for me. But I'm giving you an opportunity to be blessed and to bless others. <laughs> wow. Wow. But wisdom is shown to be right by the lives of those who follow it. Mm -hmm. Tell everyone about God's power, the psalm says today. Tell everyone about God's power. Share this. Tell them to like Elizabeth Inman's public page. Tell them to like your favorite. I mean, there's, there's churches all over that's now doing online services. Share it. Share it, get it out, make it so accessible that everybody, how many followers are on Facebook? How many people are on, on, on Instagram and on Twitter and on, share it. I, and we have the ability to reach all ends of the earth right now, today with this technology that we have. Tell everyone about God's power, verse 34 in Psalm 68 says, his majesty shines down on Israel. His strength is mighty in the heavens. God is awesome in his sanctuary. The God of Israel, the God of us today, gives power and strength to his people. Will we get through this? You better believe it. Will we cross over and be in the promised land? You better believe it. But we get to live heaven on earth right now today, healed and whole and restored and doing what is right in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love being given the opportunity to encourage you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I love y'all.